Yeah, foot. Yeah, like foot gloves. Gloves. Yeah. yeah, foot. Yeah, some people call them gloves. gloves. Some because they gloves. actually have the toe. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's mental. Yeah, they're wild, aren't they? I've yeah. never seen, I've never actually seen them. Have you not? I've heard of them. Yeah, they're hard to get here um, in shops, but you can get them online, of course. Mm. Which, um, people go running in those, but. Oh, they're amazing. I mean, is it. Because it didn't give your foot much support. No, not right. at all. No, that's okay. the kind of attention. Yeah. But see, I've got bad foot. feet. So yeah, well, that's the idea, is mm-hmm. that your foot, uh, you natural. wean, yeah, you wean your foot into being its support for you. Ah, which, right. the, sh- the idea being that the shoe has prevented you from being your own foot support for your entire life. So that's why it needs the actual, like, t- uh, incremental introduction. If there's anything, like, I, I say this, you know, you should see a doctor and a podiatrist and be <laughs> yeah. conscious of like how you do what you do to you. Yeah, but from okay. my experience with these and my experience with my own body, which like everybody else's is, isn't uh, perfect and isn't normal. We yeah. all got our own things. Um, knees, backs, hips, or, you know, all kinds of things that prevent guys as they get older, like my age, from running to begin with. Mm-hmm. But the idea is that your entire life, from the time you were a child, your foot has been prevented from being its footiness, being a foot. By the shoe. By the shoe. The structure of the shoe is compensated for what your toes would have been doing when you were walking up a hill or what your instep would have been doing if you were running or, you know, running up or down a hill. Mm-hmm. And so your foot's been able to be lazy, basically. You've, you've had a cast on your foot your whole life. So if you were to, like, start to reintroduce flexibility in your exercising of it, you'd want to go uh, as though your foot has come out of a cast. And not just come out of a cast for six weeks, like right. you would normally mm-hmm. lend yourself to physio with an injury. <laughs> but like your Matt, your foot has never been used. Yeah, you know, from the time you were a, a child. So well, the the uh, drawback of these can be that if you like go for a run, you can really detriment yourself. <laughs> you, you can like you can wake really up crippled, hard. like really bad. Like like what? All right, what have you done to me? Your feet will tell you in no uncertain terms. Oh, you're not walking down any stairs today. You're you're gonna lay in bed and ask for food from your loved ones. They're not gonna say quiet about it. Oh God, no, no, like agony. And 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 they but they warn you. Like they do say, you know. Uh, in fact, like. Uh, in all seriousness, um, I would have never done this in my normal life, but I, uh, because of beating myself up with them, because I'm a, an infant in many of my behaviors, I just got a hold of them, like probably most people who buy them do, and think, wow, they're lighter than a normal shoe, and now I'm running like I'm a teenager again, and what's my 45-minute loop near the house? I'll try and knock it down to 43 minutes, and I'm going to really open it up today, and I'm a child again, and then just like woke up like I had bone cancer, basically, <laughs> like, like somebody had just snuck in in the night and cut my Achilles heel with a, with a sword, right? And uh, before you knew it, I was doing what you were supposed to do, which is uh, walking fast on a treadmill, which I can mm-hmm. look you in the eye and tell you I've never in my life, hey, do you want to go to the gym, Craig? Yeah, I'll be walking quickly on the treadmill if you need me. I'll be reading my L magazine, trying not to work up a sweat. But they so put me in a place that I realized, wow, my feet are like baby feet. They don't know what's going on. And it took like, no, I wouldn't say months, but like uh, five weeks anyway Mm -hmm. of just like uh, walking fast, then starting to trot, then adding, I'm talking like adding not five minutes, adding two minutes, like Mm -hmm. going for a 22 minute light jog (laughs) rather than, and like getting to that point and thinking I could probably do 25, but I don't want that thing to happen again. <laughs> then let me the back end. Yeah, the back end. So, and you know, and I just started to like put little bits on, like throwing a pebble in a bag and mm. uh, carrying that around. And now I like, uh, I can I can lay flat out. I can go for like two hour long hard runs with these. And you, you yeah. go for runs a lot. A lot, yeah. yeah. In, in, in heavy conditions in Devon, like in, you know, muddy, mucky, off-road, uh, uneven ground. The, actually, and I don't know if this relates to your life at all, but the, the greatest thing that they assist me with, hard, uh, not too embarrassing to admit, but I'm a habitual ankle roller. As somebody who, whether I'm in my like you know big, well-supported boots or whether I'm in runners, uh, I'll usually if I'm out running, I'll be having the time of my life. Usually just around the corner from the house, luckily because by that time my ankles and my legs are warmed up. But I'll be throwing my head back and eyes are rolled back, and I'm feeling like I'm a child again. And then I'll turn my ankle with you know normally with just high support runners like platforms, uh-huh. which are designed again to protect your foot, to give safety to your foot and cushioning, but 
now you're like perched up on you know on platforms and you get on uneven ground and bang my ankle will roll over and it's just like I've never had it where I've had to go to the hospital but there's been times where I just thought I I think I might have to go see a doctor like mm. this really kills and I'm sure like you know people uh, are quite horribly injured by that I'm quite lucky that that's never happened but I do it all the time mm. to the point I'm sure that it's affected the structure you know that it probably happens easier now like somebody losing their shoulder you know that kind of you know dislocation type thing so it's easier but you don't know if it's better yeah exactly. yes exactly yeah, yeah certainly not uh but never has happened once with these ever wow as i say yeah and and you're just part of your foot is part of the ground there's no separation between you and the other wicked one is is deep mud Mm-hmm. When you like go into, you're not like you're not putting a, a welly boot into a muddy uh, uh, bog. You're not putting a shoe separate from you in. It's like you put your bare foot into mud, and when you pull it out, it's ridiculous. It just like slides <laughs> out like a hot knife and butter. You, like you expect yeah. to kind of like oh oh I'm gonna get stuck, and then you just realize ah, ah, I'm like I'm, I'm light as a feather, and you know. Continue running on. It's amazing. It's like an advert for the foot glove, isn't it? Yes, yeah, I'm a proponent of it, but at the same time, as as earlier, I you know like to stress, I am not a doctor, and, <laughs> and uh, you know I'd hate to hear that you uh, ran off with your foot gloves. And what kind of, what kind of advice should you give him, buddy? Because you know everybody knows that I'm a bit, uh, you know, like uh, Stuart Francis and. Uh, Glenn Wool, these are you know close buddies mm-hmm. of mine who I'm starting to tour with again, uh, starting in Edinburgh this year with the with the Lumberjacks. And Stuart was, uh, of course, less inquisitive uh, than most would be about these, but uh, his lovely wife Helen was she uh, like to introduce herself back to running again, and she of course had heard about these. And like some people with bad backs, some people with bad legs, uh, you know, sore legs, have started to get these, and you know, once again just reborn and can go back to their you know what they were doing ten years ago mm-hmm. their joints hurt less there's less impact and, and whatnot so she was very inquisitive and I you know gave her the over lunch in Toronto uh, where we just happened to be at the same time because I was going to get my passport renewed and Stuart and her were back there for their uh, for their anniversary so it was just one of those like you know probably like you are in this business where you just are uh, not always uh, aware of what your best friend's moves are but then just realize what we're in Boston together <laughs> like, like no way what day are you there like just came out of nowhere so now we're having lunch and I'm just like you know Helen you gotta get them they're great right. I guess you know you wouldn't believe how they make you feel and you'll be a kid again and, and then of course you know Stuart knowing me much better than Helen and knowing me very well are just like Remember who you're hearing this from, honey. <laughs> it's like, you know, this is this is a guy with elk skin gloves. <laughs> you know, like, I, I am. I uh, take on board a lot of you know, kind of uh, uh, unique uh, items and fads from around the world, and I'm usually, as I am right now, quite emphatic in, uh, in standing behind them, regardless of. Uh, well, I wouldn't say actually that I send I lead anybody astray, but you know, think about who you're hearing it from. I've yeah. got. I've got eight pairs of these, <laughs> so, it's so biased. I'm biased. Yeah, exactly. Very biased. So, yeah. so you're looking forward to doing the show with you know, three. Yeah. yeah, our previews start uh, in the middle of next month, so I can't wait for that. Mm-hmm. It's been somewhat in a like you know, I, I can't give any negativity to it, which is a wonderful thing about the experience of working with two buddies is that um, we've been uh, somewhat torpedoed by the, the great news that both Glenn and Stuart were invited to do the Montreal Festival, which is you know near the end of July. And yeah. we had all of our previews stacked up from mid-July to Edinburgh. So like right. once we just you know got that block booking and it was like, hey, we're going to Montreal. And it's one of those, uh, you know, I'm just quite thrilled in my life that I'm at an age and at, a, at an experience level and at an enjoyment with who I'm working with that uh, none of that in any way uh, matters to me in a, in a negative sense. And I'm just, you know, happy for my buddies but at the same time I'm entertained by the fact that like uh, so we're going to do uh, like five previews instead of 75 or something and uh, but that you know that's an awesome thing but it would be good to be on a, on a bill because you're used to doing your own show it would be incredible yeah yeah it's just awesome I can't I can't tell you you know if there's if there's anything that's been like a new thing in my life that I that I love and that I wouldn't have expected uh, like j- like the latest sort of, uh, uh, you know, is an epiphany. Just, just um, uh, uh, hard 
to hard to put a figure on it. Like just you know, something that I I was very very surprised by is just to realize that I'd be working with people that I've known for like twenty years. Mm, I can't yeah. believe that. Like in the last <laughs> couple of years of my life, it's just like you know I never would have guessed when I'd met Stuart. You know, the early nineties, Glenn in the early nineties, even before that. You know, Frankie Boyle, who's asked me to tour with him now for his last two big tours. The, you know, and this one, Frankie in like '95, yeah, this one as well. So you know, we start that at the beginning of July, which is overlapping with the with the Lumberjacks dates, mm-hmm. which I take a tiny hiatus for Edinburgh, and uh, and then we start again in September up until you know the New Year, and all these guys that I just like, I had no idea when I you know never would have thought twenty years ago. Yeah, I'll see you in twenty years, and <laughs> so that's kind of a wicked thing about it. And part of when you know I explain uh, like oh, what's going on with the, with Montreal and whatnot is just that it's. Uh, it, you know, you you know each other really well. We're not like we're not kids who are uh, who are trying to figure out what each other are up to. You got like adult needs, and guys are married, and you know, guy, guys have, you know where you're at. You know where you're at, yeah. And you also you know you know them from day dot. So there's no like trying to uh, to, to degrade the interview, but to, you know there's no bum sniffing to figure out like what kind of cheese they like on their sandwich <laughs> or whatever. And that, and in that way you can be quite you know quite flippant and terse. And that you know Glenn and I have a, have a, a, a caustic past aggressive relationship was which is tremendous as do Stuart and I in the, yeah. in the explanation of the you know him uh, letting Helen know that you know look who you're dealing with you know, that, that he feels comfortable enough at, over lunch to you know to warn his wife that like you are you are talking to the madman of my friendship circle Greg so bear that in mind when he gives you advice on your footwear honey and and I love that I love that you know that it's he, nice to that, yeah he's not guarding his his words and I'm similar you know with with both him and uh, with him and Glenn you know like, do you want to come out for lunch? No, but uh, why don't you go fuck yourself? Like, <laughs> you know, like like that's totally that's pl- uh, that's plausible discourse. Yeah. In our world. <laughs> no, I'll be too busy fucking your mom to, to come and have a lunch with you. you know? Which uh, you, know, you know, it's awesome to, to have that to not be, you know, yeah, where, where are we going to eat? <laughs> it's like it's just uh, we're lucky to have a have a world that's that's pretty fun even mm-hmm. off stage. So was it your idea to kind of do the well, your guys' idea, or was it? A- I I wish I I don't want to step on toes because it's uh, I think it was Stewart's. Mm-hmm. I think it was because you know there there's always that thing when you you know when you put something together in our business whose idea was it you know, like uh, <laughs> who's getting the royalties and you know, that, that kind of stuff. But I think because. Uh, uh, I, I don't think that I would have been bold enough to assume that either of them would want to be in a room with me, <laughs> let alone, again, I stress, not like, you know, because they know what it's like to be in a room with me. So <laughs> that, to, to me, yeah, exactly. So to have the experience of being in a room with me over years and years, and yet, like, still make overture that you would like to be in a room with me again, <laughs> I was pretty uh, I was pretty blown away by that. Shy. Yeah, a bit uh, mm-hmm. and shocked by that. And I, I'm quite sure that I hadn't, like, conceived of that plan myself is hey you guys want <laughs> you guys want another year in jail with a madman you know and uh, so you know for me it's a, it, of course it was immensely flattering mm-hmm. it's uh, also you know coming from a point of view that both both Glenn and Stewart are enormously successful right now and I you know I've just come out of this wonderful room in Bristol where I've had you know the third added date in in Bristol and it's amazing which is absolutely amazing and you know this is your you're kind of seeing me in the you know the peak of my West Country powers really so I, I must you know temper what I what I uh, paint as my normal scenario <laughs> in some way because because it's not always like that you know mm-hmm. there are places where uh, New Zealand, for example, you know, I, uh, on a Wednesday night had uh, upwards of nine people up, to, you know, <laughs> just like where, and that's what our world is like, where you just go to places where, like, okay, these uh, so regional. I'm not regional and all, yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah, for for example, I like love Scotland and love uh, Glasgow, somewhere that you know I can play big rooms, big people come out, and I, mean, I think that's you know, uh, Frankie and I on his last tour did probably nearly a dozen maybe 15 shows up there in various big rooms Uh so I've been like really you know put out there to Mm -hmm. to not just comedy audiences but active comedy goers which makes a totally different uh, Mm -hmm. you know not people who are just catching you at three in the morning on Dave people who are actually like out at six o'clock on their way to a show for eight mm-hmm. o'clock and thinking maybe we should do that often honey and, and, and then can of course you know they hey there's that Canadian guy who's in front of Frankie maybe we should go see him in Brislington tonight and, and you know it kind of and, and it does work out so I don't want to create like too uh, um, 
uh, false an impression of, of what my popularity is right now. But the fact is that like both Stuart and Glenn are enormously successful comedians. Mm-hmm. Stuart right now with his Mock the Week and uh, and his you know uh, uh, Apollo television coverage, he's yes. he is like he's a normal. He's huge. He's huge. Yeah. And for him to like essentially much as you know all my friends have done Frankie's done that you know earlier Rich Hall had done that guys that just like hey you in obscurity there come on up (laughs) and just like you know lifting me into a new place guys that are already playing you know when Stewart's in Bristol he plays the Colston Hall yeah and when I'm here I'm I'm in a smaller room in Bristlington so for for somebody who's like already playing a big big theater to to say hey you know why don't we do a show together again you know Glenn and you can come and play the big room that I'm playing now it's tremendous and and unnecessary it's not yeah. something you know he's he's helping out a lot I don't I don't say like I'm not bringing anything to the party but he in no way has to um, to make that overture which he which he's done and uh, and again I'm just really you know flattered by it mm. it's amazing and do, doing this stuff with Frankie I suppose yeah. that's a way of getting sort of, sort of coming under the radar not not going hey he's me but they see you with Frankie and then yeah. think of you as a good person to go and see it's amazing yeah. which and, is great and they see me in a you know in just really in a professional setting mm. like you're you're in I, and the other I think the other big thing about it is it's not like uh, I'm not going to deride any other people that I've you know performed with but um, they're full rooms Mm. That's such a big difference, right? Mm. Like you know, if you go into a you go into a five hundred seater and there's you know even three hundred people there, it's not the same as if it's sold out. Mm. And there's a there's a titillation factor when people are like you know in a in a rammed room going to see a known quality comedy product. There's an energy. And there's an energy there, and yeah. all of a sudden you're like given that. Okay. You know, you're given that to play with. It's like a drum kit for a child. There you go. You know, make that wake the neighbors up, and it and it's totally awesome. It's you know different than like coming out to 150 people in a 500 seater in Worcester somewhere and you know <laughs> you come out and just <laughs> you know, uh, no yeah <laughs> you know that kind of and, and you're kind of put in a position to have to make it better yeah rather than to be give you know you give something yeah and then you've, you've got to get up there yeah, yeah and all of a sudden I'm I'm given up there but I mean Frankie's to, audience warmed to you then they yeah, I think, you know, I think a British audience, I've, now I say this with, uh, we did 120 dates together, so mm-hmm. I'm speaking from a point of view of, like, uh, uh, certainty that they just seem to like extra show. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a British audience thing. I don't think, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you're kind of, the nightmare scenario that you play over in your head is that you're going to go out there and bring the who, where's the who? Yeah. And I'm like, Frankie, 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 who? <laughs> you know, like uh, who is this? Guy? You expect like you know your your most insecure mind has that you know uh, template playing over and over, but they're not like that. They just you know you, oh who's this guy? Oh oh, oh. Uh-huh. he's funny looking. You know, and then two minutes in, bam, 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 that's an interesting point he's made. And before you know it, you're like, you know, off to your uh, 22 minutes is what I'm asked to do, mm-hmm. which for me, with, you know, my tenure in the business and... Uh, it's kind of all right. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, yeah. You know, bang, bang that out in seconds. I'm like, you know, okay, and good night. <laughs> you know, like, in seconds. So, um, so it's amazing. Mm. It's an amazing thing. And again, something that, you know, it's one of... It's one of the top, you know, I can't think of what the others would be, but it's got to be top, like, five phone calls in my life, let alone, like, probably top three calls in the last 20 years of my mm-hmm. life, where mm-hmm. he, uh, this is Frankie now, you know, three years ago, uh, we've been doing kind of, like, little shows here and there, as actually a similar pattern to what I do quite a bit of, like, uh, in, in April, I was in uh, Norway with Frankie and Ed Byrne doing shows together. We had come from the Altitude Festival in Meyerhofen in Austria, where we'd been working with uh, with Andrew Maxwell and Rufus Hound and uh, and uh, Marcus Brigstock and you know uh, yeah. Tim Minchin and all these like big name guys that like you know I hope you're seeing the pattern that. Uh, what were you doing there, Craig? <laughs> Just like uh, you name it all, like you know, guys who were ubiquitous on British television, and uh, I, uh, I like snowboard. <laughs> and and really, my relationship to all those people is that I'm friends with all of those people. Mm. That's really that's why. where it comes. That's from. where I'm there. Yeah, yeah. that's why I'm there. Not you know, for a lot of reasons, my comedic stature or my you know my level of comedy. Mm. 
Um, but for whatever reason, for the last, you know, however many years, that's been what I've been up to, just playing a lot of really fun places with a lot of really fun people that I know really well. Mm. And, uh, and through that, uh, Frankie and I had done a few shows in Switzerland and that kind of stuff. But just like those kind of like ensemble shows where I, I like comparing, so I bring him to the stage and... About three years ago, it would have been, uh, I had brought him to the stage at uh, Camp Festival in Dorset, one of my favorite festivals, you know, near the house anyway, West Country, laid back, just, you know, awesome. And uh, he, it, it really shocked me as, uh, as we were, he was on his way back to his, uh, to his motorhome, and, <laughs> and I was on the way back to my motorbike, this ain't usually the perspective of how our worlds work, Craig's sleeping on his motorbike. Frankie's in the motorhome. That's the difference there. Um, but as I was passing him, you know, I, I don't ever like, even though I have been and am friends with these people for years and years, I don't like to impose on, you know, these people are very busy. That's what you actually find, if I can say anything, of the famous people that I interact with a lot. They're just, you know, they're busy people. Yeah. They're up to stuff. They're, you know, they're What's doing... What's going on? Yeah. yeah. They're doing a cartoon. They're helping a friend write, write a film. They're working on a TV series. They've got their live show. They've got a DVD coming. There's a special with Channel 4. They've got, you know, everything that they're, they're up to at that moment. And they got their kids. And they got their wife. And they got... You know that kind of stuff is going on, so I don't like to, you know, you know, annoy them essentially. So I'm always quite, you know, in a way, I I don't like to suffer my own friendship with them, but at the same time, I don't like to impose my I got sweet fuck all to do for the next hour and a half. Can I just talk your ear off? You know, kind of thing. So I'm, I'm cautious of like taking up too much of their time. So I just, you know, being as polite as I can be, just like, hey, Frankie, you know, awesome to see you again. Great to work with you, and. Uh, and he just said, do you mind if I call you about something in a, in a couple of weeks? And I was like, no. Like, you know, and, and, but also, like, kind of left that with me and just, like, call you. I was like, why? Yeah, yeah why? And, 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 you know, another thing that you will notice of successful people is that when they say they're going to do something, it, it comes to fruition, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. So that was kind of playing in my head of, like, Frankie doesn't say, I'm going to call you in a couple of weeks unless he's got something to call about. And he's like, what the hell is this all about? So, of course, a couple of weeks rolled on and uh, he leaves a a message and I, uh, you know, both of us probably don't like to hear our names on our, our voices on answer phones, so... He leaves a message, uh, you know, bit nebulous. Hey, just calling about what I was talking about. You know, what was that thing I don't know anything about. Okay, right? Okay, and I call him back, and of course, you know, he's not going to be answering his phone as I don't answer my phone. I mean, obviously, you know, it rules with successful people. You never subordinate yourself to be available to answer your phone. And uh, so we're about you know four times back and forth telephone tagging, mm-hmm. and then just like the fourth call of him to me it was just uh, anyway it's ridiculous uh, the reason I was calling is because I wanted to ask you if you uh, wanted to open on my 120 date and Normo Dome last ever tour of my life and I was just like ah! Ah! You know, like yeah yeah you're there yeah you know, and, and, and is this an answer phone yes yes please don't call anybody else I would like to do that and then you know all of a sudden you go from a guy who at that point for me, filling my busy comedy schedule would involve calling lots of people. Lots, yeah. lots of different clay would involve calling like the comedy box or calling the comedy store or calling, you know, uh, the, the frog and bucket or calling uh, the stand in Edinburgh or the stand in Glasgow and like uh, the glees, the glee clubs, yeah, yeah, as you yeah. know, and piecemealing your life together and trying to like, you know, do you have a loose Thursday because I'm going to be in, in uh, Pocklington on a Friday and I could, I could probably do Nottingham on the way there and, you know, trying to yeah. put together 120, 100 150, 175 to get yourself gas money to go to the next place that you're doing anyway. And there's like kind of, you know, it's work. Yeah, so yeah, a yeah. lot of work to like fill a month. All of a sudden, you've had to talk to forty different people, answer phones twenty five different times. Some things have fallen through. Some things are confirmed. Oh, I'm going to be traveling to France. Then I can't make it back. Will the flights check? You're having to do all this world, and all of a sudden, just like here's a hundred and twenty dates. Here's and they're all set up. And I was and I at first I was like, well, but. There's not 120 big cities. Where do you... And then immediately it's just like, oh, no, no, we're going to be like, we'll be in uh, London for 10 days at the Apollo. Mm -hmm. We'll be at the Apollo in Manchester for a week. 
will be like, no, we'll just be staying in the very best hotel in town. <laughs> you not touching your wallet. Me paying you above board what I would ever have to pay you to have you do the tour. So like it's being hyper generous to me, yeah. putting me in the best hotel in town, not letting me touch my wallet in any of my travel, whether I get there on the motorbike, whether I drive there in the car, whether I take a train or whether I fly, that's all covered. And just, you know, constantly buying meals and just being like a really great friend. Like yeah. somebody would treat you if you you know if they were a friend of yours and could be generous to you so all of a sudden that's happened and it's just like I can't tell you about it it's just like a massive like oh okay that's yeah. for you yeah. yeah and it's just like okay for the next like eight months solid you know this you can just look your girlfriend in the eye and just say like things are we're, we're okay mm-hmm. our bills are paid we, you know, we can, we've got time off. We've got, you know, time to be able to go out for dinner. We're not stressed about, you know, I'm not going to have to go to the end of Cornwall for 80 quid on a Tuesday <laughs> now because we would like Christmas presents. And did so, you go straight from that to Toby? Yeah. So that's the situation. This is what you're, this is what we're, we're looking at right yeah. now. Yeah, is yeah, that yeah. I've been taken from a place where I was, you know, having to make a lot of effort to work very hard for not anywhere near the return that I've been able to achieve by being invited up, as it were, by my friends, including Frankie, including Stuart, including, you know, Glenn, including people that, uh, including Andrew Maxwell and Ed Byrne and all these people who are, you know, Marcus Brigstock, who are, are of huge stature that just for whatever reason like me and are generous to me. And, and pick up their phone if I call them or return a text when I call them, and which to me I really cherish. And it's just like real generous people that, that's changed my life immeasurably. So yeah. all of a sudden, like rather than being this guy that's got to you know, run around a lot, I've got a really, really, um, an amazing career. It's incredible for me to be in Bristol on a Wednesday night in a full room of people going, they were going pretty nuts in there. They and, it. and they loved it. And they, and, and as did the last audience that I was at here. And, you know, and I, as I said at the end of the night, I, I, the only thing, and I feel horrible about it, is I, I want to tape a DVD here. Yeah. I want to, because I, I live in the West Country. This is my New York. <laughs> you know, Bristol is somewhere that my partner and I always say, if we're going to move to a city, it's going to be Bristol, because it's totally livable. It's, uh, you know, it's wonderful. I have, I have friends in Bristol that I've met, uh, not through comedy. One of, uh, one of the guys that I know here who I've met his friends through, I met uh, in a motorcycle shop, and he was helping me try on helmets. <laughs> and and that's, you know, a nice fella named Rob. That, that's, you know, for me, that's the kind of town Bristol is, mm. that people, you know, are still open-hearted and open-minded and not jaded enough that they're um, unable to have a new friend when they're mid-30s at the time that I met these people. And, you know, that's a pretty, um, that's a pretty awesome thing. But, but uh, essentially, uh, to, to get on topic... Uh, I'm I'm in a place now where um, it's a lot easier for me, mm-hmm. and and as the things go with the with the uh, lumberjack show, with Frankie's tour coming up, and with the like the winter stuff that I've mentioned briefly that I've been up to with the, with the guys that I mentioned in Meyerhofen, uh, all of that stuff is um, is something that we've been working on now for like the last eight years. Uh, My pinnacle year was this last winter. From January 1st until the 17th of April this year, I did nothing to do with comedy unless it involved snowboarding. Really? This is my situation. Yeah. I all through the winter, I'm basically like, uh, are you near a ski hill? (laughs) <laughs> oh, well, then we have nothing to talk about. I'll, I'll talk to you in the summer months. It's, it's seasonal. And, yeah. It's seasonal. So uh, we basically tr- have tried to piece together that, you know, what I'm getting at is that it's now like lifestyle driven. Mm. So my winter is all about snowboarding. It starts in Canada on January 1st, moves through Canada for about five weeks. We go into Europe. This I'll take you through like this, uh, this last winter uh, started in Whistler January 1st. Ended at Big White in uh, in the middle of British Columbia on the fourth of February. I came home, changed planes, went out to Salvbard in the uh, um, uh, Spitsbergen, Norwegian Islands. Went up, did uh, snowmobiling and dog sledding with a comedy show. Came back for about a minute and a half. Got in the car, winterized, of course. Nokian tires, the uh, the GR W uh, W2s, best best snow tires on the planet. Uh, winterized coolant. Uh, roof racks headed off to uh, to Switzerland 
where we did a tour through uh, through Geneva, Lausanne, uh, Zurich, and uh, and Basel, all the time hitting ski hills, uh, uh, side trip to Austria, back into France to do shows, starting in Chamonix, uh, ending up in Mirabel. So we're up there for like a, a week. Uh, up to Scotland after that to do the first ever MV Mountain Festival at the end of February. So this is like a new snowboard comedy, music and comedy festival that's uh, for the first time done now in, in Scotland. So all of a sudden that's like another week out of nowhere. Back to France at the beginning of March. In France up until the mid of March. Home again for a week, just snowboard or, or uh, uh, mountain biking through the West Country, essentially just getting more fitness ready for more snowboarding because that <laughs> took us then to Meyerhofen. From Meyerhofen, which was the uh, 25th to the 31st of March, uh, had two days to get up to Norway where we did a, uh, a, week, of, um, a week of shows in uh, a place called Opdal, one of their big resorts, and then came back and finished the winter out in Oslo up at you know, the 17th of April. That's like all comedy, all snowboarding, the entire <laughs> winter season. And uh, this winter, we're expanding it. We're just going to put more snowboarding and comedy in. So this, you know, this is how my like uh, last, essentially, like four solid years have gone. And that's gone from a lark. And that's, you know, again, what the, what the British public and, uh, and what the British promoters have demanded of the comedians. It's like, it's a real, you know, Brits in my world have really seized the day. In Canada, we, we got the mountains around us, but I didn't use them as much when I lived there. Yeah. And, you know, when I go back now, it's like, I'm only here for a month. I'm going. <laughs> like, we're going today. I didn't sleep last night, but we're going. We're going up. Like, who's coming? We're going now. And, uh, and that's something that I took from, like, you guys here, because I didn't really understand the idea or the concept of, of holiday and, you know, yeah. actually going to Sardinia on three days, you know, <laughs> actually bothering to drive to Stansted so that you can end up in Holland for a, a four-day weekend. Yeah. And, and that's something that the Brits just do really well. That's a, you're a real nation of like, let's go, you know, <laughs> let's go get it done. And I, I took that. Well, thanks very much. Yeah. It's no <laughs> worries. <laughs> thanks for giving me that. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah, that's uh, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. No worries.